Can I speak to somebody? Can I speak to somebody right here? Are you really ready for me to talk to you or somebody? All right. Um, today we are dealing with the deliverance part four. And I was asking God what I must share with you. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, don't preach to them. Tell them your second encounter in heaven. My second visit to heaven. I want to share with you. And when I finish sharing with you, you will see how demons will come out. Oh, you are ready for... Since God has called me into ministry, I've had privileges of being taken to heaven several times. But God told me to share the second visit which I had in heaven. I'll tell you next time. Oh, you are, you are willing, right? I want to share with you what I saw in heaven and the things I saw there and what God told me in heaven. And um, I want you to listen very careful because in this message, there'll be a lot of exposition of tricks. I can hear Mike. I can hear the word mic or talk very soon. Now, can I continue? Yes. Now, so I was praying. I was in a fasting for three days and three nights. And I ate nothing, neither took any drink. When I finished my three days of prayer and fasting, the Holy Spirit told me to continue until the day is going to tell me. I went to the fourth day of fasting and prayer. By this day, I was so weak that even my hands could not fold. I could just tremble by the power of fasting, not eating and drinking. On the fifth day, God said, continue the fasting. And I ate nothing, neither did I take any drink. And on the sixth day, God said, continue. On the seventh day, God said, continue. On the seventh day, I started praying just by thinking the prayer. I had no energy. I had lost a lot of water that I could not produce the voice, but I would just think the prayer. And on the eighth day, God said, continue. And I continued, and I ate nothing. As I kept on praying and speaking with God and to God, I went on to the 11th, to the 12th, to the 13th. On the 14th day, it was too hot. It was in the morning and it was too hot. And God was silent. And I thought, this is the time that I must now eat. Now, as I was preparing to eat something, and I went on the table to eat something, just right there, God said, go back and pray. On the 15th day, 
I was in prayer and in fasting. I ate two weeks ago. Neither water nor food was in my stomach. And behold, on the 70th day, early in the morning, around 5 a.m., I heard a wind, a terrible and rushing wind, blowing around the house. The next thing I saw was the window of my bedroom shaking and vibrating. And I thought it was like, it was a vision, but it seemed like it was happening physically. Should I stop here? No. Now, then as I looked on the window, there was this vibration which was happening on the window, and behold, right there on the window sat light and it kept on shining. And I was already weak by the fasting, and I would not talk, neither speak. The moment the light went off, I was in heaven. As I was moving, this was my second visit. When I was there, I was standing on top. There was like a plateau, like a mountain, like a table mountain. And we were standing there. And there was a sea of people. And these people, all they were doing, they were singing songs. I'm not saying there were people. I'm saying there was like a sea of people. And when I look every side where I was, all I could see was people. And all what they were doing was to worship God and to say, holy, holy, holy is God. As I was there, I saw a horse coming in the, in the air. It was a red horse. And there was a person who was sitting on that horse whose eyes were like the torch. You know, the way they, they you know the torch, right? Yeah. Now, you have got two torches putting them in somebody's eyes. And there was like two torches, two lights coming from the eyes of this man. And his face was shining like the sun. And the time he was coming on a ready horse, every person who was worshiping, they went down on their floor, not bowing down, but they actually lied on the floor. And as I was thinking, what's taking place here? The moment I was thinking, and the horse just came close to where I was, and the person came out of the horse, and I could not look at him twice because of the light that was coming from his eyes. As I looked at him for the second time, there was no light. He was a normal human being. When I looked at him again for the third time, there was blood dropping around his head. And in his hands, there was also blood flowing out. We all pray, oh, I want to see the hand of God. I want to see the hand of God. But ladies and gentlemen, if Jesus can show you his hand, you can't see it twice. The wounds which he had are still there until now. And the face of Jesus, it's not a face where he is even smiling like, oh, oh maybe he's, you can't look at him twice. He's always crying by the sins which are being committed by people in the world. He's crying for you. His hand, you can't look at it twice. His face, you can't look at it twice. And I, I got shocked because the first time his face was shining. And the second time he looked like a normal human being. And the third time there was this man who had blood coming from his hands and around his head. And he looks at me. And he stretched out his hand on me and touched my head. 
I want you to understand very well. This was the day whereby my prophetic seeing and sight and anointing was officially released. <laughs> Overflow, I think you are sick or something happened. What about the overflow of the miracle tent? Oh, something happened to them? Now, listen to me. As he stretched his hand where I was, I felt like heat, like fire, coming to where I was. There was intense heat, and he touched my eyes. When he touched my eyes, he said, what do you see? Immediately, right there in heaven, I had another vision where I was seeing myself walking. And I was walking like this. And where I was walking, there were so many people. Others were climbing trees. Others were climbing cars. Others were climbing buildings. And it's like I was walking with him, Jesus. And we were walking together. And he asked me, he said, why are these people cramping trees and uh, cramping all these things and all these matchets? And I answered him, I said, because they want to see you. And he turned where I was. He looked at me. He called me by my name. He said, shepherd, time is coming. Whereby people cramp trees. They'll flock like this to see me in you. I should continue on next time. <laughs> now, listen to this. Then as I was there, then he removed his hand on my eyes, and I was again back into my normal senses right there in heaven. Then he asked me a question. He said, who do you think you are? There are some things which I do in my ministry, where people that don't know why I call those things and what I say, but listen today. You listen and you will know why. Now, he told me, he said, who do you think you are? And I knew I was in heaven. And I said, I'm your servant. And he told me, he said, you are not what you think you are. You are our representative. He said to me, I will never, number one, I will never put you to shame. Number two, I am sending you for a very difficult task that the many whom I sent failed to do it and accomplish it. Because they were caught along by the things of the world. And they failed to do the mission and accomplish it. And he looked at me and said, the mission I'm giving you, it is to stand right in the camp of Satan. And challenge him right there and show Satan that I, I am. Now listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. As he said that, he stretched his hand. When he stretched his hand like this, there was the map of the whole world on his hand. This is why sometimes when we are singing a song, you hold. The universe, you hold. When we are singing that song, you hold the universe, you hold everyone on earth, I become so emotional because I remember what I saw on his hand. When he stretched his hand, the whole map was, the whole world, the whole map of the world was right there. And when he touched anywhere, he's touching, that place could appear right there. And he would ask me a question, what do you see? 
and I could tell him. Now he asked me a question. He said he touched somewhere and there were like people who were all putting on black. And they were in a huge building and they were surrounding something on the center. There was like a stone. And these people were bowing to this thing. And he asked me a question. He said, what is this? I said, I don't know. And he told me, he said, this is a worship that is taking place in the world. He said, on this area. And he told me, he said, the devil is intensifying himself, strengthening himself, preparing to deceive many and to take more astray. When I looked on that stone, there was like the weaves, these weaves for the women, the weaves for the women. And he told me, he said, this is one way of deception. That the most of these things that the women put on, they carry demons that they don't know. Now, oh, you don't even want to hear. This is why, listen to me, this is why, listen to me, this is why. Many women, and he was speaking to me. He said, this is why many women have got more problems than the men. He said, look at it again. When I looked on that stone again, there was like a perfume. And he said, this also has destroyed so many men on earth. And he told me, he said, you are living in the world full of the devil and full of sin. He said, there's darkness on earth. He said, it will take you to go. Among many whom I have sent on earth, he said, you shall reflect the light. And you're going to tell these people, and unless they descend, they will perish. This is why women, when you buy anything, pray for it. The way you are clapping hands, it shows you are affected already. It is important. Nothing that I know that I ever bought anywhere, including my own clothes, that I don't pray for. And they could show me how they direct a cloth. If they want to attack a particular person, they could show me how it happens. They can actually make a cloth under the dark world just specific for you. And they will make sure you buy it. Are you hearing me? Hmm. We are living in the world that so many people are ignorant. But I want you to get my word very well. I never said the mesh, the weave is bad. I've told you, pray for anything. Pray. You don't know who does them and where they're coming from. Pray for anything. Now, he began to show me things because of time. I won't tell you all. Because I don't want to put my emphasis here. He began to show me things, what are happening, the evil that is taking place in the world. And he said to me, he said, I'm going to send you. You're going to have a stone. And that stone, I will reveal myself on that stone. And that stone is me. And I said, I receive. When we talk about Jesus Christ being the rock of ages, it's not just a story. And I want you to hear this. Some have been asking, what happens? How do you see? How, how, do, how do you, when, when you are praying for people, how we don't see you struggling, you just come there and say, you are healed and you leave. And the miracles happen. What happens? Now, I want you to listen very careful. Then, he showed me so many things. That's why I've got deep insight 
of every demon under operation in any place. I can stand here and yet sing a demon in the overflow. You will see now, very soon I begin to expose demons. I begin to call them by their names. And each person by the demon that is being affected of. Oh, I think let's do it next time. And should we continue? Yes. Medical tent. Should I continue? Yes. Now, are you hearing me? Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. Now, look at this. So, he taught me so many things. And then he disappeared in my presence. And there was a man who came to me. And this man was neither a male, neither a female. Whether handsome or beautiful, I don't know. And this man came to me in a white apparel. He said to me, there's an assignment that I want to show you today. And he took me to a place where there was like an absolute house. And we were climbing it. Listen. I've been in uh, some of the most beautiful cities in the world, but I've not yet seen. I have not yet seen until today a place beautiful than that place. <laughs> now listen to this. We began to cry. We were crying like, like um, radars. We began to cry. When we went inside the room, there was a great noise. That noise was noise of kids, children. And there was every age group of children. And every child had an angel. And that angel was teaching this child how to speak the angelic language. And I asked, I said, who are these? And he said, these are children who are aborted on earth. When every child is aborted, he says the angels take them to, he to heaven and begin to train them how to speak the language of heaven. And when those children, and they grow, if you aborted 10 years ago, your child now is 10 years old. And she looks the way she was supposed to be looking when she came on earth. And the, those kids are trained. And when you die, or on the day of rapture, if you have not confessed your sin, and it's not cancelled, they will actually in heaven show you your child. And the child will come to you and say, Mom or Dad, I'm the one who you aborted. If it's 17 years ago, before you die, actually, the child by that time will be 17 years. If you were aborted three years ago, the child will be three years old. And the child will speak to you. Unless your sin is forgiven, then you'll be cut off. So there were children. Others were like just two months old. And they were being trained there and the nest there. Now you are very quiet. You are a suspect. <laughs> now, should I continue or you are? <laughs> now, listen to me. So, this angel took me to another room. In that room, there are angels who sit there just ready to be sent on earth. And others arrive and others go. Listen to me. If you hear me talking about angels and teaching about angels, I don't just walk up from the bed and um, just say, oh, the angels, the angels, the angels. No. I know what I'm telling you. Angels are real. There are more angels on earth than the demons. Without them, that small accident could have killed you. Without them, that small sickness could have killed you. 
Without them, you could not even be raised up. Some of you were raised without even a father. Some of you without even a mother. Some of you is complicated. Your parents were poor. It's so complicated. God's angels are real. If you, do, if you are doubting, in our church here, they appear physically so many times. Now, there are angels on shift. There are others who come and others who go. And they are released in the hundreds of thousands. And in the heaven, there's no time. There is no day, there is no night. Because God lives outside of the time zone. He sees the earth there rotating, becoming a day, becoming a night. He sees it from here. So in heaven, there's no time. This is why you may be like, my miracle is delaying. Because in heaven, to them, there is no time. You may cease taking time because you, you operate by the time. But in heaven, there is no time. Don't you think if it's, it's night on earth, it's also night in heaven. You're, you're, you're wasting your time. In heaven, it's forever controlled by the light of God. Now listen to this. So he took me to a room where there were angels. And he began to introduce to me angels, the names of angels who were right there. And I began to see those to, and, and to hear the, their names. This is why most of the angels, I know their names. And some of the names in the Bible, which you, you, you call the men of God, Actually, there are also names of healed. It is the duty of angels who comes actually on earth and heal you. Now, they began to show me angels by their ranks. As they showed me there, they took me to another room. In that room, there was like small, small bottles. And inside those small, small bottles, there was a spare part of a human being. You see in this bottle, there is water, and inside the water, there is the, the new eye. There's a liver, another bottle, a liver, another one, a womb, another one, blood, another one. There are spare parts of every human body. And they said to me, they said, in here, that's where God keeps all spare parts of beings. He said, when you go on earth, when you say, receive your healing, to people without the womb, a new womb will be coming from here. It will be entering the person. If a person has got a shorter leg, if I say now I command your leg to grow, there will be a new bone that will be coming from heaven to fix and make the other leg also to grow, to become equal. Now when you are HIV positive, it, there's a new blood in heaven which can actually come and replace your old blood. Are you hearing me? So they showed me all these spare parts, like spare parts. There is endless spare parts. All spare parts. I repeat, there is any spare part in heaven. If you are having a problem, with your bones. There's a spare part of that area of your bone in heaven. When I say be healed, or when a man of God comes here and tells you, be healed, or when a man of God in your church says, be healed, what happens is, there is it's not that one which gets healed. There is actually a new pair that comes from heaven and fix it. Now, as he showed me all the spare parts, he said to me, he said, when you go on earth, you will do healing. You will pray for the sick, and the people will be shocked because the new spare parts will be appearing in their bodies. No wonder. 
We have seen in this place a man without a lung. After prayer, a new lung appeared. No wonder we even had a, a testimony just now that something is appearing on that, uh, uh, the lady who plays football. That something is appearing where it was not there. We had someone who had com completely no eyes. New eyes appeared. We had someone also who had no womb. She, she, the doctors had removed the womb. A new womb appeared. Because in the heaven, there are spare parts of every organ of a human body. Are you hearing me? Yes. Are you getting on my point what I'm saying? Yes. Now, so when I was there in that room, when they showed me everything, they took me to another place. And in the heaven, it's not like you walk. If they say, we're going to be there, you're already there. If they say, let's go to your house, you're already there. In heaven, you, sh you move by objects. In the heaven, words are not words, are objects. In the heaven, if you say a door, I want a door here. As you speak, a door appears. So anything you mention, it appears, it happens. If you say I want to be there, you're already there. I want flowers outside of my house, flowers are already there. Because in the heaven, words are objects. Now, one amazing thing is, in the heaven... It is so real, just as the earth is real to us. It is not a spiritual place where you move in the air. No, there is a solid place like this. It feels real. Just like you, when you dream, your spirit gets troubled and you cry in your dream, you get chased, you run away to save your life. It feels real. In heaven, it feels real, just like earth feels real. Am I coming against somebody here? <laughs> then I was taken to a place. On that place, there was like a, a small river. Very small, very tiny river. And it had water. And the water was moving very fast. And he spoke to me. He said, this river comes from the earth. These are tears of God's children. Every time you're crying to God, your tears don't just fall anywhere. They go in a river, a spiritual river in heaven. And now listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. It was this river of tears which this angel told me and he said, this is why God is calling you. And in heaven, they don't call him God. They call him Elohim. Oh, you are here? Or? Yeah. So they said, this is the reason why Elohim has called you. Now, do you see these tears? This is why Elohim has called you. He said, you have been called to go and reduce the level of this river. To remove the tears of many. Yeah. And immediately, I was in a huge garden with him. This is a big garden. It had no beginning, no ending. And he said to me, he said, this is the garden that we are sending you to go and cultivate. He said to me, the garden is big, but few workers are there. He never said the garden is big, few prophets are there, no. Few pastors are there, no. There are many prophets, there are many pastors, there are many teachers, but few workers, prophets who are working are few. Pastors who are working are few. Bishops who are working are few. Most people just come in church, two hours, they are done. Service is over. 
God is looking for people who can work day and the night for him. And he said to me, he said, few wakers are there. And he said, the more you wake in this garden, the more we increase what we had put on you. So he said, open your eyes. When I opened my eyes, I was seeing part of that place. It was cultivated. But the bigger part, which was not cultivated, was huge than the cultivated area. And he said, this is what your friends who were there before you and who are there before you have done. And he said, you have been called young for such a purpose like this. And he said, stretch your hand over the garden. When I stretched the, my hand over the garden, behold, the garden was beautiful. This garden is not like the normal garden, you know. It had the same level of grass. Same level of grass as if somebody had gone there and slashed. Same level. Same level of grass. And it was huge. And it had flowers. Nice flowers. Heaven is beautiful. You have no any idea. That's why Apostle Paul said, for me to live is Christ. And for me to die is gain. Every person who ever had seen heaven, he will tell you that they, they, they would rather stay in heaven than on earth. These streets, Pretoria Street, whatever, you call this beautiful. In heaven, the streets of heaven, You feel you are, it's, your spirit is not from this world. Your body came from the soil, but your spirit was breathed in by God. Your spirit came from heaven. When your spirit goes there, your spirit, you feel home. You feel like I was supposed to be here. It's like fish. You have taken a fish out of the water for so long, and you put the fish back where it came from. It feels home. That's how heaven feels. And if people get scared of dying. This is why Jesus said, he who shall believe shall not die. Because what he meant is, the person will just continue the life. You just continue living your life in the other side. Am I talking to somebody here? There's no death for the righteous. Am I communicating to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody? Yes. Raise up your hand. Say, Father, Father help, me. help me. Father, Father help, me help me not to miss heaven. To heaven. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Take, away take away every hindrance every that can hinder me. Can hinder me. Amen. Amen. Now, listen. Listen. Then, after that, when I saw the garden, if you are here, the question is, what are you doing in the garden? God is looking for workers, not for people. He's not looking for you to say, I'm here. He's looking for people who can help in the garden of God to cultivate Are you still there? Yes. Now, listen to me. Then when I, when I saw the garden, I was taken to another place where there was a huge house, beautiful house. And he told me, I am not allowed to go there. But you are going to go there. And there was another angel who came 
from the same building and he came and, and welcomed me and took me. Listen, in heaven, my brother, there's too much protocol than the protocol you see on earth. So the other angel came from this other huge building and he came and took me. And when he took me, he came on the door and he said, he also is not allowed to go inside there. When I entered, I saw there were people standing and there were few. And I could actually count like there were about 24. And these people, all they were doing was worshiping. And when I looked ahead of them, far, there was a throne. On that throne, there was no one who was sitting there apart from light. Now, then there was another angel who came from the same place and came and spoke to me. Listen, the place was, you could just have this fear. The place was like, all you could do was to, to be afraid. It was terrifying. The place was too much terrifying. Too much terrifying. Around the throne, there were so many activities taking place. But I could not even look at right there. Because of the place, how you could actually feel that there is someone very important that I'm not supposed even to be here. And the angel came where I was and beckoned me and said, These people you see here, the 24 people you see here, represents the 24 elders. And the meaning of the 24 elders, it is the meaning of the whole day on earth. For your day has got 24 hours. And each elder here is responsible for one hour on earth. These are like ministers of God who report to God what's happening on every hour. And every elder is responsible for the hour. And these 24 elders were all bowing down to the throne of God in fear and in trembling. And he spoke to me, he said, when Elohim sends you on earth, you shall have the ability of seeing what this 24 sees on each hour. Now, I was taken out of the room. Nobody spoke to me in there, apart from the angel who spoke to me. And I was taken out of the room. And I found myself also in another place. When I reached another place, the angel who has quoted me, he said to me, he said, you are a lucky person. For the place where you went, no one is permitted to go. For that place you went, it's called the I thought you would know. He said, where we are, it is heaven. But the place you went is called paradise. <laughs> if you don't believe there is heaven, well, I went there. Ask me, I'll tell you. And if you don't believe more, it's easy. Listen to me. Listen to me. I want to share with you my experience, my second experience I had in heaven. Now, look, look at this. Then the angel said, where he went is the paradise. And he said to me, few people who are still alive today have ever had an advantage of reaching where you went.
Then he walked with me a short distance. As he walked with me for a short distance, then he said to me, he said, now we'll show you at the revelation room. There is a room in heaven for revelations. And in that room, so many mysterious things take place. I, I entered a room, and in that room, God, ladies and gentlemen, God is a wise God. Hmm. God is wise. God is just wise. The wisdom of God is just deep and dangerous. When I entered this room, in this room, there is anything taking place on earth appearing like a video in this room. There is the data of every person who is alive on earth in that room. They actually know how many are still alive and how many died in every day. And they keep a data of every sin you have ever committed. And they keep a data of all Christians and who are living according to his will. And all the believers who got saved, who got born again, there's a data. And in that room, I saw people arriving from the earth. So many people. And there were three books which were opened for them. There was a book of death, a book of works, and a book of life. It's either your name is in the book of death, you'll be sent back. And when you're sent back, demons will welcome you and take you to hell. This is why when people are dying on the, on, on the hospital bed or anywhere, there are some who will be screaming, they are seeing fire. And some will be screaming, they are feeling hot, they want water. Because they begin to test the hell right on the, where they are dying. Imagine the, how beautiful you are burning in the fire. We are very silent. It's okay. Should I stop? Should I hey, overflow? Should I stop? Miracle tent. Should I stop? Now, or maybe the overflow of the miracle tent. Now, listen to this. Are you still here at your home? Yes. Now, the angel who spoke to me, he said, look at these books. Some of you, you managed to enter heaven, but your name is not in the book of works. You did nothing for God. You enter, yes, but you have your own place to sit. This is why the Bible says, our works will be judged by the fire. And the, the Bible says everyone will receive a reward according to how he worked. So if you just come every Sunday as a church member, sit down. I receive, I receive, and go back home. I receive, I receive, and go back home. You may actually enter heaven. And you may have your name written in the book of life, but not in the book of works. You're going to have your own place to sit. And there are those who were arriving right there as I was there. In heaven, hundreds of thousands arrive each second. As I'm talking now, people are arriving in heaven. And I saw some could be like when they arrived there, they were welcomed as if they were queens or kings. They were given a crown right there and they were blowing trumpets for them. Welcoming them, they were being hugged, escorted to other rooms. While others were just be pointed, oh, yeah, 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 use that door, go. You have entered, go. 
because they had no value in the kingdom. We are playing. People wonder why sometimes I don't sleep. Why I stay the whole night awake, praying and ministering, getting tired, again ministering the whole night. They wonder why. It is because I see and I remember the garden is big. And he told me, once you play around, or we'll take what is upon you, or we'll give someone who can use it 24 hours. And who wants that? And in heaven, if they give you anointing on your head, it's like there is a crown. No one can sit on earth, but in heaven they see a crown on, on top of you. That's the anointing. And they showed me a place where they have hung so many crowns of people who are, they messed up. And God removed the crowns and is keeping the crowns in heaven. And if he wants, he takes it and gives it to other people. There are some people today, they are admiring other people's ministries. Yet they were that before. But God took it out of them and gave other people who now those people are admiring. <laughs> Don't forget, all this experience happened when I was in fasting. Are you still here or you're home or? <laughs> now, look, look at this. Then there were books there. An amazing thing is, the best mistake that the devil has ever done is to forget that we are the sons of God. Now, but most Christians, when I was there, when he was showing me, he said, this one is failing to enter there because of one thing. There was a demon of depression. There's a demon of depression that has attacked so many people. The demon of rejection. People feel like they're rejected, depressed. It is a huge window for demons to enter and destroy your life. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me or you are not hearing me? <laughs> now, so, he was showing me so many demons which were under operation, which were affecting the saints for them not to make it for heaven. There are so many things taking place around your life that you don't even see. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody here? Now, there's a book of life, there's a book of works, and there's a book of death. Where is your name written? Where is your name written? Are you here? Now, the angel who spoke to me, he said to me, we want to show you what's happening on earth. Then he opened like there was a huge screen which was de depicting every aspect and every living of a person. And it's very fast. The life in heaven is faster than anything. It could depict any person. And he asked me, give us any name that you know. When I mentioned the name, all the things of a person could appear on that screen. Now listen to me. Most people who are dying now and are being buried, well, we're not supposed to be buried. And the sun is just demonic attack. They are not, yet, they are not really death, but they are being buried. And we have buried so many people who are not supposed to be buried. They were supposed to come back to life. Am I talking to somebody here? Now, I want to show you something which is very important. Much of the diseases 
which are on earth are actually a result of demons tormenting people. And Luke 4, verse 40 to 41. Luke 4, verse 40 to 41. The Bible says, Now are the setting of the sun indicating the end of the Sabbath. All those who had any who were sick with various diseases brought them to him. And he laid hands upon every one of them and cured them. Verse 41. And demons even came out of many people, screaming and crying out, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not permit them to speak because they knew that he was the Christ. Am I talking to somebody here? He cured them. He healed them and casted the demons out of them. Which means what was the main disease inside of them? It was demonic. Much of the sicknesses we have today, arthritis, whatever, TB, BP, are demonic connected illnesses. Sugar. They are demonic. They can never be healed. They can only be treated. Am I talking to you or you are still? Now, when I was there, and I want you to listen very careful, I was told that much of the things you're going to meet on earth are demonic. This is why I know what I'm doing. Jesus said to me, he said, I shall go with you. I will cover you and I will protect you. Now, as I was with this angel, and I want you to listen very careful here. As I was with this angel, he said, let's go on earth. Now, when, when he said, let's go on earth, immediately we were in a place where people were worshipping. And these people were worshipping, but they actually didn't know. The time they were worshipping and praising, if you're in heaven, if you're looking on earth, anywhere people are worshipping, there is fire burning. All churches now who are praying in the name of Jesus, there is a symbol of fire on top of their building, but they can't see it. See the way you clap your hands. So we went into this church, and um, when we went into this church, it was like most people who I saw there were like Indians. When we entered, the pastor was preaching on the pulpit. And he said, I want to show you what is on the corner. When I looked at the corner, there was an angel. And the pastor even didn't even know. And most of that, he said, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll sit here. The time the pastor would speak words, the angels would move around and give people what the pastor was talking. And the people would not even receive. And even some could even sleep in the church. And he said, you see what's happening. And most people who were sleeping had a demon sitting on top of their head. And the demon could sleep. And on top of a demon was like a god. Down here was like a human being. When it sits on the head of a person, a person could fall asleep. And these angels who were distributing would pass these people and give other people who are receiving in the church. This is why I like to say Receive, you keep on saying, I receive. Because I know, on that day, I was told, you're going to have two angels who shall go with you. One will give you revelations, and one shall impart what you are teaching. If I'm saying receive, one angel goes around and begins to drop. One angel tells me, one angel moves around and drops what I'm talking and what I'm preaching. And he said to me, Go. And he removed a sword, a sword, and put it in my hand. And he said, Go and deliver my people. Go. All people who are born 
who are in problems, in trouble, go, deliver my people. And he touched my ears and he said, you shall hear the voice which has been escorting you. Immediately, I was back in my, in my, in my room on the 18th day of fasting and prayer. The vision was in the morning. That time it was 6 in the evening. Which means I stayed from 7 a.m. under the trance. Seeing this vision in heaven. And to 6 p.m. And when I woke up, I had enough energy. And I sat down. And I took my porridge. I broke my fasting. The following day, what that voice was telling me kept on coming. And the screen they showed me in heaven kept on appearing. Now, what I've told you is just the quarter of what I saw in heaven. Because part two is coming. <laughs> From that day onwards, if I look at a person like this, I see a screen. And I see the life of a person on the screen. And I hear that angel whispering to me, this person is like this, is like this, the house number, the problem like this, like this. Since that day until today, the sword of the Holy Ghost, which I was given by God, is still with me. And when, now I want to use it. I want to deliver somebody. Can I deliver somebody? Can I deliver somebody right now? Now, I want you to pray. I want you to connect with God and the heaven. I want you to pray. I want you to pray for anything in your house, whether it's your weave, whether it's whatever it is, whether it's your... Just now, I want you to pray. Let them catch fire. You, you may be affected by something you don't even know. And by what cause did you don't even know? So I want everybody to stand up right now. Everybody stand up. Lift up your hands. Everybody stand up. Lift up your hands. I want you to pray, tell God the following words. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive every sin I have sinned against you. Wash me by your blood. Perfect me by your blood. In the name of Jesus, help me to sin no more. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I, I connect myself with the life of heaven in Jesus name now wherever you are begin to pray pray connect yourself to the heavenly grace just pray right now wherever you are pray pray in the name of Jesus Raka son terivra hasoko proko son terivre he Razo proko son tarivra hasen terivre La santa ya praka son te he Ma souvra hason te hijes Lizo va hason te ha Ma kato ripra hason Le se te repre ke son to riva ha Manto ripra hason ke repre he se te Manto ya raka son te La pra hason preni shika ha In Jesus name we pray Miracle tent. In the miracle tent. Lift up your hands. Right there, something's going to happen. In the miracle tent, something's going to happen. A miracle is going to happen. A breakthrough is going to happen. A breakthrough is going to happen. Deliverance is going to happen. In the overflow of the miracle tent. In the overflow of the miracle tent. In the overflow of this hall. And everybody in this hall. And you watching on the screen, where they're watching me from. Wherever you are. Listen, there's a connection right now. That heaven is going to connect with you. All I want you to do is open up your heart. Now listen. I'll be coming back after this prayer to prophesy and to move around and pray for people. But now I want you to open up your heart. Connect to the heaven. Tell God I, I don't want to go to hell. I connect myself with the grace of heaven. 
lift up your hands and begin to pray right now and claim your healing claim your deliverance call upon angels of heaven to intervene upon your affair upon your situation pray
it's in this place, heaven is here. The glory of the Father's in this place, touching our lives and ministering to us. The presence of the Father's in this place, heaven is here.
Sing it loud to him. You do my, he does glorious things. He's a faithful God, awesome. He does mighty things. He's so glorious. He's a faithful God, and awesome is his name. Come on, declare for the last time, you do mighty. You do glorious things. You are faithful, God. Awesome as you are. You do mighty, uh, glorious. You are faithful, God. Awesome as your name. You do mighty things. Glorious. You are faithful, God. Awesome as you He's an awesome God, he raised from heaven above with we. Storm power and love, our God is an awesome God, our God. He's an awesome God, he raised from heaven above with we. Storm power and love, our God is an awesome God, our God. He's an awesome God, he raised from heaven above with we. Don't part and love our God, our God, yeah. He's a awesome God. He reigns in wisdom power. Oh, our God, yeah. He's a awesome God from heaven. Heaven above, and we stomp power and love. 